Okay. So I don't have any uh, fancy intros or anything yet still, but you know, I I did make a better um, I did make a better thumbnail this time. So um, tonight we're going to talk about Gerbilgru. Uh, I think that's how you say it. It's a German CAM software. It is um, fully open source. It is really interesting, and it's one that I've had my eye on for a long time. The uh, cool thing about it is that not only is it a CAM software, not only is it a G-code sender, but it is also a full-featured machine sim that can run the G-code and give you a kinematic simulation of what the software put out. So as far as like learning CNC, uh, it's really, really interesting because it gives you a virtual machine that you can run your code on and see what happens. So we might play around with that some tonight. Um, I'm, I, I don't know how much we're going to get through. Um, this is the first software in a really long time that I, I looked at the interface for it, and I was just like, oh, God. I'm not sure how to get started in this. And I was hoping to get some time tonight ahead of time to um, look more at it, and I didn't. So, Sorry. Uh, you get the full uh, clumsy clicking around. So we'll give everyone a couple more minutes to drop in. Uh, hey, Rick. Hey, Josh. And um, we'll go. Nice. Living room streams. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, John. For everyone... Uh, John in the chat was one of the people to build a milk crate uh, from my design and has been doing a ton of really cool cam stuff uh, from Fusion. And I know you guys want me to do cam on Fusion, but um, I'm good at cam on Fusion. So it kind of defeats the purpose. But if enough people actually really want cam from Fusion, uh, I will uh, eventually take a look at it. That's the best I'm going to give you. Right now, I really want to play with all the ones that I've never touched. So maybe we can do a whole like different stream on Fusion Cam at some point. I don't know. So uh, with all that, hey, John. Um, we have a few people watching the stream. Um, let's uh, look at the software. So you're not missing anything in the bottom right. Uh, so you get my face. But there's, there's just nothing going on down here. Um, but, hey, Heather. Hey there. Um, we... This is this is the interface that you're greeted with when you jump in. Hey, will. So, the idea here is that like this this is your machine. This is a good representation of a pretty generic CNC router. And the way I'm assuming that we would get started is we'd figure out a machine representation that looks like our machine. So, um, I did spend a minute looking through this list. And this list is really interesting. It's got machines like the print NC. It looks like it's set up to have a fourth axis in the middle of the bed if you wanted to try to simulate fourth axis movement. Um, it has... Uh, this actually might be a good... Well, no. I was going to say this might be a good milk crate analog, but this looks like it has an x-axis. Um, 
The Maslow simulation is interesting. So, like, the Maslow is a really cool machine that is a hangbot, and it, like, drapes from two chains. Um, all the jokes that come from that. <laughs> and, uh, hey, Petros, um, there's all kinds of people here. Uh, so I, I'm kind of curious what the simulation from this thing looks like. Um, oh, yeah, other cool things that this thing does. It produces code for three, four, and five axis mills. Uh, so it does rotational G code and you know, rotational and you know, rotational, rotation orientation. Um, and it does simultaneous apparently, uh, which is really interesting because you got to pay like a whole bunch of money for Fusion to do simultaneous. I don't know if it's good. We might find out. Uh, it does code for robot arms. That's interesting. I have a robot arm over there. Uh, it does laser code. Um, it does four axis foam cutter code, which is interesting because then you can do like wing spars and stuff out of foam. Um, so, and, and the thing that I'm the most interested in is it does lathe code. Like, there are no free and very few accessible cam packages that create lathe code. And the lathe code that I've seen from the YouTube videos I've taken a look at looks pretty good. So. We're gonna look at three axis mills. Um, I'm just gonna poke around and see if I can find something pretty close to a milk crate. Uh, that's sort of close. 2030, 30-18. We might just use this 30-18 sim. It's pretty close. The, are one of these a ruler? Um, oh yeah, it does, um, multiple Gerbil flavors for G-Code. Um, I'm the most interested in, uh, Gerbil How and, like, the Gerbil V1, uh, because those are similar to the controllers that I have on this thing. Um, we'll use that for, oh. Oh, I wonder if it doesn't like it because um, find list of available ports. Hmm. Okay. This does G code sending. I would like to see that. Um, Uh, the idea behind this stream, Heather, is that we would, uh, the, these are all free and accessible softwares, and um, I am relatively good at CAM. Hi, I, let's, let's do a quick intro, um, since there's people here that I don't know who they are. The whole idea of this, welcome, is I've been a... CNC programmer in some form or fashion for almost two decades. So I've got a lot of experience under my belt in both hobby cam and um, professional cam. And I've got a list of uh, almost 20 free or what I would consider accessible CNC programming softwares, software that costs less than a machine, essentially, um, sub $1,000 but most of these are free. Um, and basically we're looking at them sight unseen. How much effort does it take for me, a seasoned CNC programmer, to figure out how to make usable code out of that and then send it to this guy at the end? I don't know how much effort this is going to take but it's interesting and it's free and you can download it and we're going to find out. So to answer your question, Heather, um, 
this software would support some of the machines that we have at RCL. Um, but I don't know uh, if we would ever use it there. We have a, I think it's a Shapeoko 3. So this is a really similar machine to the machine, one of the machines that we have at the Makerspace. Um, but I don't understand. Ooh, there's COM3. Ooh. Okay. So I didn't like that. Uh... G-code transmission is aborted. So I'm running a ESP32-based fluid and C board. So it's not Gerbil or Gerbil Howl, but it's like real close. Um, I'm kind of curious if one of these might work. Um, If it doesn't, we will use CNCJS, like we've used in the other streams. I feel like this Gerbil V1 dot whatever should just work. Anyway, I'm not sure I'm going to spend much more time on this. What do you need? I'm sorry, I need you to go to bed. Yep. What time is it? It's bedtime. I love you. Because I'm on the internet in a meeting. <laughs> this does really look like you're in yep. a meeting. Bye. Anyway, that's my daughter. Um, okay. So. Yeah. Um, Rick, it, it doesn't seem to really like any of the things that I've picked, so we're just, COM3 is definitely the port that, um, CNCJS was using, so we'll just use the simulation controller, and, uh, Oh, wow, okay. So this is a 3018 with an A axis. A 3018's a really close size analog for a milk crate, so we'll just stick with that. Um, okay. 2D templates. All right, so at this point, I'm trying to figure out uh, the right way to get my part information into here. So um, let's say import DXF, import SVG. I think I have a DXF of the Part I do we'll import that, and it only brought in circles. <laughs> okay. We go into two D.
<sighs> okay, so that's not what we want. One second. We don't need air compressors for a live stream. So let's figure out how to delete these. Clear workspace. Yes, I really want to delete all the data. Um, Okay. Alright, so it liked the STL, and the STL came in at the right scale. Let's see what other files types we can bring in. I hate programming off of STLs, but maybe it'll work. me for a second while I try something real quick. I'm going to try and make an SVG out of those DXF really quick using Lightburn. Okay, so um, flip that guy around, export. I'll make an SVG. Importing the SVG. No idea what happened there. Oh, there's something. Okay, so it likes the SVG, it liked the STL. Um, now let's see how to get these things where they are supposed to be because they're nowhere near where they're supposed to be. So I will say there's a manual for this software. Um, I haven't read a software manual for a cam software in a really long time, but I'm starting to wonder if we're going to need it. Oh, wow. Configuring, connecting, interfacing. Okay. Let's 
go to the stock box. Okay. All right, so here's the manual. Um, <laughs> load geometry. Let's look at that really quick. First of all, we need geometric data of the model. This can be obtained from a DXF or an SVG file. Under, find a lot of example files. And there it is, first big surprise. The moose is too big. Don't worry, the geome geometry can be easily scaled. For this, we activate the button 2D scaling. Okay, I don't see any of these buttons. So, that makes me think that I have missed a step. Oh, create job. Hidden Zinken, cut Zinken, quadrant cut. Uh, okay. So, who out there knows what they're doing? Or wouldn't know what they were doing at this point? <laughs> Robot paint? What does this do? Okay. Okay, we're going to delete that. Um, all right, so first things first, we need to figure out how to scale and move. Well, we need to figure out how to move our geometry. Project. Jobs and templates. Gerbil Guru has a lot to smell. It's particularly easy to create a template if you already have similar templates during installation. Some startup templates are already installed, which are, can be easily changed. For this, we change to view. Let's use copy without tabs. Hmm. Depth, plunge. Okay, so I'm getting that. But we need to move the work. Maybe we don't care. Maybe I'm being too picky. Um, let's take a look. What's going on? To do view, assign the job to geometry. Okay, let's uh, let's let's just ignore where this exists for a minute, and uh, let's try and make some stuff. Um, so it appears that the software is object driven, which is cool. So we can do we can select everything for different operations, which is what we want. Um, let's do. 
I need to move this keyboard so I stop trying to use it. Uh, let's, uh, so I'm control clicking to pick multiples. Uh, unfortunately, what is path 13? Yeah, okay. So unfortunately, uh, when we, when these were created, they were not created right next to each other in the model tree. It helps to hit control and not function on your keyboard when you're trying to select multiple things. Hmm. Um, I want to do, I want to make a job on all of these at the same time. Hmm. Okay. So let's pocket these. We'll create a contour pocket. Okay. Um, So only this one active, create template. I'm wondering if there's a way to group objects because I don't want to have to make a new operation for every path, right? That seems absurd. But I, I think that might actually have to happen. That's frustrating. Uh, cause, okay. So let's take a look at this. So down here on the bottom left, um, for this pocket operation, we have a whole bunch of things that we can do to it. So, um, I'm going to make the assumption that all of this is in metric. Um, because these numbers seem like metric numbers. So let's say my depth increment is uh, three millimeters. The um, sum increments, you know, they, they have nice tool tips down here. That's nice. The final depth of all milling passes. Uh, okay, so we're doing half inch plywood. I want those holes to go all the way through. So let's make it 3.175, which is an eighth inch. No, oh, really? Why does that have to be a whole number? Okay, I wonder if I can make it 3.5. Oh, I wonder if I, it's because I'm making, if I do 12.7 as the sum. Seven five. Ah, okay. Look at that. All right. Be nice if it was like, hey, dummy, you can't do that because the depth is greater than the sum. But that's uh, whatever. Fine. Um, plunge feed rate five hundred millimeters per second. That's what three hundred is. I really need to make a cheat sheet for myself. We'll make it a thousand. Six hundred. Um, why a full screen calculator? Windows, we don't need that. One hundred divided by twenty five point four. That's not right. One hundred times twenty five point four. Twenty five hundred inches millimeters per minute divided by sixty. Yeah, okay, right. that sure, whatever. Um We'll make it 2,000, probably fine. Rapid feed rate, 2,000, sure. Um, 
So I'm assuming these are in millimeters per minute. I bet that's in the manual. You just had the manual up. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Um, height of clearance plane, this is always important. You want to make sure whatever the height that you retract and you move across the top of your material to is taller than whatever you have for hold downs. For the hold downs for these projects, I always use tape. So it's, you know, whatever the top part is. Um, it, Rick, it kind of did, but it didn't tell me why it wasn't working. It just made it look like I couldn't use a decimal number there for a minute. So, you know, the, it could have been better. Um, the milling direction, counterclockwise, that's probably fine. We typically want to climb cut what? Uh, when we're milling. Counterclockwise is probably climb cut. I can't remember. Working plane, okay. Uh, the plane at which the process is started. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to assume that working plane zero and our depth. This wants us to work from the top. Maybe we can get that machine sim to work and we can find out. Um, lead moves, diving ramp. Ooh, okay. So this is a ramped plunge. Uh, we'll make it three millimeters. Tool identification. I want it to be a, a one eighth inch up cut. Cool, cool. I, I love that it's showing the stock that will be re remaining. That is absolutely fantastic. I uh, love that. Useful. Offset inside, offset outside. Neat. Um, what if I make that step over 50%? What's that look like? Oh, look at that. It completely changed this. What if I make it 25%? We get a second pass inside there. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, smallest area is still able to be machined. make that 50 and for the offset inside or outside uh, that's a really useful feature if you want to leave stock for a following operation or if like you know your holes aren't quite big enough so you could do the offset outside and like you know walk them in a little bit so what I'm getting from the workflow that they're trying to force me into by only letting me select one thing at a time is that it wants me to probably make this into a template. So let's do that. We'll say um, copy from job. That's an awful, awful name. So let's say um, um, create inner pocket. Eighth. It's descriptive. You know, it kind of works. So, okay, so now we can say here. Whoa. It was not letting me right click on these before. That's interesting. Create copy. Create job. Geometry editor. Add geometry. What I'm really curious about is, will it let me, oh, I can export them, interesting. Extrude, rotate. Okay, I was really hoping it would let me group those. 
That's fine. Um, okay, and there is my template that I made earlier. And there is my cut. Okay. Now, I wonder if I can do those. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we found stuff. Neato. Um, that's actually not at all what I wanted for the, the square. Uh, so, can I remove that job? Oh, it like, like doubled it up. Okay. So, we'll delete that. Delete that. Okay. Create that job. Okay. Learned so many things. Um, what if... I feel like I ended up in a whole new part of the software somehow. Like, things were opened up. Anyway, um, shows the huge display. Okay, next. If I do these, okay. He was not letting me right click on it before. I will say this is a f the 5.02 beta. There's a 5.0 release that is like their stable release. So like maybe that's why there's all this, these like weird copy templates in here and stuff left over. Like maybe there's, maybe it's just not good about cleaning up garbage from testing. I don't know. Um, so, John, a lot of this reminds me kind of of um, Cam Bam. This is kind of how Cam Bam's interface feels. And Cam Bam is another commercial one that I would like to look at. It's like a hundred bucks. It's it's on my list of accessible software, and it does a lot of really neat stuff. Uh, but it's you know it's all two D driven like this is. Um, but let's do a create job and. I would like to not do any of those. Um, I'd like to just spiral these, I think. Tool too big. Oh, I bet the tool is too big for this one. I think that's an eighth inch. Um, hey, it gave me an error. OK, cool. Uh, Let's look at this. So our depth increment, our sum of our increments is, are too deep. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's annoying. Uh, hmm. I wonder if there's a way to be like, oh, I don't want to use the active paths. Do not all use the same tool. Oh, OK. Oh, yeah, it didn't didn't carry my tool over. That's cool. OK, so this one's still too big. I feel like there's a way there or there should be a way to like deselect. But maybe the only way to deselect it is to fully delete it. That would be annoying. Okay. Create job. That's fine. Okay, so it defaults to those or to the six mil in mil, whatever. I wish there was a way to define my full depth. 
Maybe we can. Uh, we're going to do a 6.5 depth for the spiral. Rapid feed. Okay. Spindle speed uh, does matter, obviously. It doesn't matter for my machine because I don't have direct control of spindle speed on this right now. Um, for this feed rate with a single flute cutter in wood, uh, I would normally use an 18,000 RPM spindle speed. Um, so, yeah, okay. Uh, that all seems to work. What is the transformation mode? Man, there is so much in the software that is, like, not walkable. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, what do you guys think so far? I, like, I can't decide if I am, like, really enjoying this or if it's kind of terrible. So I'm going to drill 3 millimeter, drill eighth inch. In mill, depth increment, sum of increments, 12.7. I'm going to say that the depth increment here is probably a pluck or a peck. Seems, seems fair to think about. Um, we'll do 500 for the plunge. I'm plunging into wood. You don't ever plunge with a router really fast unless you're plunging into very soft plywood like I am. Um, the work plane is still zero. Spindle speed, spindle direction, park position, all of that seems sane. Uh, okay. Um, so this is the pocket plus pocket operation. So normally what we do here is we take this down to like three millimeters and then we pocket out this guy. Um, and normally what I do for that is like a 3D adaptive kind of thing. But since we're not programming from 3D, we probably can't do that. So what we'll do is we will say, um, oh, there's, there's so many interesting things that I feel like this can do. 3D, 3D create two, what? Okay, first things first, I'm going to save this project, wrong file extension. Save project as, okay. Um, zeroed cam. <laughs> okay, we have successfully saved. And our, our save button is a red floppy disk. It's never red. Um, but I'm doing that because I'm really curious about... <laughs> doesn't feel incredibly intuitive to me. <laughs> John... <laughs> <laughs> Anything that makes FreeCAD seem more logical is quite an achievement. <laughs> That's funny. Um, you're not wrong, though. Um, the, the minds behind Gerbilgru and FreeCAD have, like, I, I think they've got some things going for them. Uh, the... Uh, the Gerbil Guru guys really push OpenSCAD. Like, they have a direct OpenSCAD import, I noticed. Uh, load OpenSCAD, save SCAD. So, like, that's kind of cool. Um, scan points. Like, oh, if we could do uh, touch probing through this, that's pretty cool. Uh, I would really, like, hmm... Uh, yeah, okay. I would have to agree if you like going for free software like this. Yeah, it, I'm kind of with you, Will. Like, um, 
this is this is not a beginner software good lord but there's a lot of power in it um i feel like if you're trying to get a job done and you're trying to do it free and you're trying to do like pretty advanced stuff there's probably some things here I, I, just thread milling um I, I they have a tutorial for thread milling but like all their tutorials are in german i think most of the youtube videos i've seen so far have been in german and they've been like super high level um but they mm, it's kind of pretty, pretty cool they, all right so let's uh oh yes uh <laughs> Whoa. Okay, so like <laughs> it's driving over there. That's not cool. Uh but you know it's like it's like defined a, a stock off of my depth. That's kinda neat. Um and we can see a 3D path or like a 3D wireframe. Uh, there's, okay. We gotta figure out how to move. Okay, well that button's neat, it's useful. Uh, we, well, look, at the, look, at the, look at the drill bit representation over here. Would have completely missed that. Oh yeah, a UI designed by an engineer. Absolutely, you know, it's very functional if you can figure out how to function it. Ooh, stock. Okay, uh, V offset, vertical offset of the stock. C created. Okay, so like if we had a vice lifting it up off of the machine bed. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's go back to this. Uh, I'm kind of wondering if I do all that and I right click on it. Um, okay. Now, did it, okay, so it just moved the origin there. Actually, it does. It does do a simulation of cutting into a defined stock, supposedly. Hi, Nick. Uh, I'm excited to have you. Um, the, but I don't know how to do it yet. <laughs> uh, I would really kind of like to get rid of that cylinder thing that I made. Okay, that's neat. Um, it's got nice tool definitions. Um, you know, like nice pictures, good representation. It'd be cool if you could upload your own because this doesn't look like a one flute upcut or a one, you know. But, you know, that do it doesn't really have to. <laughs> Neat, okay. I wonder. <laughs> I wonder if it's um, if we're supposed to be cutting that axe out or are using that as a cutter. If this does tangential head code, that would be really interesting. Now I want to go find that. Um, yeah. Okay. You're right, Rick. We were we were on a path. Gra geometry editor. 
Okay. So we can mirror. We can set proportional scaling. We can, yeah, okay, that's, mm. all right, so we can kind of move it, I guess. Uh, what do you guys think? Do you think Desk Proto would have been better than this? I think, Will, you said you've used actu actually used Desk Proto. Is it better? It was a, a neck and neck tie, I think four votes for each. <laughs> okay, so it didn't update the origin and I didn't move this little thingy. You voted for Desk Proto. You probably made the right choice, but I was more excited for the machine simulation portion of this than anything, to be honest with you. So, um, you know, I made that decision for you. Uh oh. Where did the machine sim go? Oh. <laughs> oh no. Ugh. It is open source, Nick. Um, Render the tool breaking. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's mm -hmm, mm -hmm, let's do this. So if I uh, uh oh. There it is. Okay. Uh, how do we get out of this zoom mode? I just want to. Okay. Ah, that was it. I was in the three D tab. That makes sense. Um, so let's put the origin back at the. We'll put it at the bottom right. right. Nope, I want the bottom left because I know my right from my left. Go here, go here. Okay. Set wet work piece zero point. shit and we're not family friendly anymore this is neat I you know didn't expect this so that's kind of neat um Okay. <laughs> Apparently machine collision isn't a thing. Um,
Okay. So then we'll do this and we'll say, because I've kind of programmed it all assuming that the uh, top right or the, oh. Okay. Um, now just on the off chance that it tries to take control of my machine, I'm going to unplug my machine. Okay. Uh, that's pretty cool. Um, I mean, I don't know how to get the the tool to show up in the spindle so that like, you know, the movement works. But that's pretty neat. Okay. Drop STL, drilling, active pack tool paths. Okay, that's fine. Um, I'm really curious if we can get solid stock and how to do that. Show preview. Oh, it does do solid. Oh. Stop. Um, I wonder how we can reset the simulation. I want to clear the workspace. Oh, this is like for our full machine control. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Um, let's uh, move on. Um, stop this. Exit. I wonder if we just need to let it run. But this is a pretty neat tool. I'm I'm impressed. Uh, continue. 
Uh, we broke it. That's annoying. Okay. Um, good thing I saved. Mm, I didn't save before I moved things, though. That's okay. Uh, we'll go to 2D. Let's see how fast we can do this. One thing I really would like to get rid of is that STL. Origin left there. really doesn't like just, you know, hitting enter, but whatever. Okay. Oh, okay. So it's just like always cut no matter what. All right, whatever. We'll save that. Go back in here. Um... So we were looking at whether or not we could use 3D tool paths, uh, 3D, create 2D geometry. What does that do? Uh, we want that. Some of increments, 12.7. Depth increment at three. Hundred. Oh. I wonder if that's that wants us to do. Um you know, something different than I wonder, I wonder if this wants us to use like a baz relief for, for this 3D operation. I bet it does. Okay. Won't worry about that. Uh, we will do, we'll do this. So we'll do that and we'll go create job, pocket. Um, Do a contour pocket. So of increments three, we'll make it a three depth, 1500. And we'll pick the right end mill. That should be fine. And then uh, Uh, and we'll use the inner pocket path to do this hole. And the same for these two. Because that's totally fine. For this one, I wanted to directly cut this out. The intent for this was the leftover stock inside this hole fits inside this slot. 
and um, I couldn't figure out how to do that in carry moto. So we're gonna see because we don't want to cut. We don't want to do a pocket. We want to do a direct cut. Uh, we'll say cut inside. Oh gosh, it's got tabs. Neat. So we'll do twelve point seven. Uh, with a two mil depth increment, since we want it to be like good. With a, we'll do a two thousand feed rate. Um, we'll do a ten degree ramp in. With no leads. Uh, curious what those look like. Oh wow! <laughs> so it does this big sweeping lead in. A five millimeter lead out, <laughs> like blasts into the stock. That's not what we want. So we'll do zero for leads in and leads out. That's not because that's what we want. All right, that looks good. Um, it's on the inside. We do a number of tabs. I wonder if we can move the tab. Oh. All right, that's pretty good. We can we can drag our tab placement around. That's very handy. Can we live update our tabs? We can. All right, that's very useful. Um, and do a two millimeter thick, five millimeter wide tab. I wish we could, we can make them triangles. Length of tab. Uh, do two millimeter triangle ramps with six millimeter width. Corner overcut. What does this do? It dog bones. Okay. Um, we're not going to do that for this, but we will do it for this one. Um, you know what? Screw it. We will do it for this. There's no reason not to. Uh, all those are, f all the rest of those are fine. Let's go look at what it looks like in 3D. It'd be cool if it generated an STL out of your leftover stock. It's like, <laughs> it looks like it, it like ran part of it. Um, and now it's got this super long tool representation in it. That's interesting. I wonder if that's just whatever tool is like currently available. So, well, the cool thing about this machine preview is you could import G-code into this and this virtual machine will just run it. So you could use this as a fact checker um, for a different cam software if you wanted to, which is really powerful. Um, it was something that we used a lot when I worked at the tech center. Uh, it was a super expensive software called Vericut and you could do full physics simulation of a five axis mill in it and it would then you know let you go through and um so i wonder why it machined it removed material from those but it's not removing material from these hmm. okay um We 
interesting. Okay, I'll hit save. I don't remember what I did to crash it, so hopefully I don't do that again. Um, I'm gonna run. <sighs> okay, so one of the things that we did. Yeah, Rick, so the, you can tell that it created the tabs. Um, I think we can uncheck. Uh, select only this active. Yeah, so you can tell that it created the tabs in here. Um, did it? What did it do? Okay, so maybe it didn't like cut all the way down? It looks like there's a lift pass where the tabs should be, but not a full cut through. Did I not tell it to go down all the way? Yeah, sum of increments, depth increment. Hmm. Okay. Wheel. Dig into that in a minute. Um, so when I was playing with all of this before, one of the things that I really wanted to do was this was a slot and this is a slot and they're separate from the outside geometry. This has brought them in not separate. And the last two softwares we programmed off of were 3D, so I was able to select a floor, uh, which gave me the ability to slot those. Um, this is 2D. And the way I would fix this in Lightburn is, or like a Vectric software, is I would just add a line in here and like select these. I don't know if I can do that in this. Um, add geometry. Equidescent, complex, files. Axis align bounding box, casing track. Uh, Okay, so it's like, that's kind of neat. Um, ooh. Can I do that? I don't feel like that's going to work. Um, tangential blade. So, you know, the right way to probably do this was be prepared for it and add a second enclosed rectangle that, like, goes out beyond this. Um, hmm. Oh, that's, that's kind of neat. You could, wow, okay. So you could use these circles to create dog boning and stuff if you really wanted to. Um, we're not going to do that. Oh, no, there's no undo. So one time when I was a young green engineer, I was very excited to start my first CAM job learning to program CNC machines. They were like, you know CAD? Come learn how to program our CNC machines. And I was like, awesome. I'm down. And what I expected was to learn how to use a system like MasterCAM or uh, Pro NC, which is Pro E at the time, or Creo's CAM package now. 
and um, ah, crap, that deleted things I didn't want to delete. Uh, okay. Um, and I was working on a super complex drawing to program off of, and I screwed up. And I didn't figure out I screwed up until about 20 minutes later. And it wasn't like a huge screw up, but it was enough of a screw up that I didn't want to go back. And um, I asked the guys that were teaching me how to use the software, like, where's the undo button? And this was a software that ran on a Unix VAX emulator uh, in 2006. So, um, they looked at me and they just laughed and they said the undo button is the last time you saved. And it would appear that Gerbilgru has the same, <laughs> the same mentality. Uh, God, all right. So, um, oh hey, now, now it's doing the thing. Um, let's look in here and see if we can see our tabs. We do see our tabs. They look interesting. It's not exactly what I would expect, but okay. Um, so let me reopen this project. From the last time I saved. Um, I guess we're gonna just like ignore those slots because I don't know how to program them without cutting the entire perimeter. Maybe I could cut the entire perimeter. Maybe that's fine. Maybe that's fine. Maybe, maybe let's just do that. Um, it still should do the thing I want it to do. So I want it to cut on the outside, create job, cut, cut outside. Okay.
Okay. <laughs> Weird. Um, for some reason, um, my USB cable wasn't charging my camera while it was streaming from it. So I think that's fixed now. Uh, sorry about that. Okay. Uh, anyway, slots slots are a pain to work with. Um, sometimes they're a problem to program. Um, the uh, there it is. Um, maybe there is a slot operation. One way to to get around this is um, if you can program from a center line um, and tell it that the end mill is slightly smaller, that's one way of getting around it. We we got past it using FreeCAD doing that. Um, but since I can't do, since I can't like select the floor, I don't know how I could do that in this. So we're just gonna leave that out. Um, not going to fight it, but one thing we will do is, um, set the depth to three mil and the depth increment to three mil. And we will take all the slots out of it or the tabs out of it. No tabs. Um, and it will, uh, it'll just cut around the outside and I don't care. Because uh, we're going to cut around the outside at the end anyway. Um, and... <laughs> uh, that's going to be interesting. I wonder how... Mm -hmm. Let's figure it out right now. Um, so we'll set that to passive so I can see what's going on. Um... So I selected that line and this line. I'll say create job, cut, cut outside. <laughs> it's still going to cut on the inside, even though I've got this border, this barrier here. Ooh. Bye, Colin. Have fun. So whatever you're doing. Um, I wonder if there's a way, so we can do add geometry. Um, so we could do the encasing rectangle thing at a zero, which would can we merge those? No. Nope. Okay, so we very much have to be prepared for this. All right, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna let that fly for right now. Um, this is the first software we've done that does that claims to do V carving. I guess FreeCAD kind of said it did, but and we played with it a little bit. Um, I'm just going to lie to it and tell it that we've got a V-carve bit and we're going to see what it looks like. Uh, I just want to see what it does. So spindle speed, type tool. I really want to see this tangential blade too. So it completely ignored the E and the X, E and the T, because they're, again, they're all one thing, because um, they were meant to be pockets. Um, T slot cutter. Uh, 
the axe. Uh, uh, it's, it's really funny to me that there is an axe just hiding in the tool list of things. Um, I don't feel like we, it should have any offset. Oh. Okay. So there were multiple V-carve options. Uh... Set that to passive. Um, pocket. Okay. Plug and pocket. All right. That's interesting. Okay. So the the idea there is um, a lot of people use V carving to do inlaid signs. So you would do the pocket, the pocket, pocket. And then you would do a plug, and it's a negative of it, and they fit together, and then you can glue them up and then, like, face them off and get all kinds of different cool colors, and they're, like, perfect. Um, it, interesting. That's one of the things that I've wanted to do on this machine, and I've never gotten around to it because time is a thing that I don't have. So what we will do this time, though, is we'll say... Uh, the text is a pocket. Um, it's interesting that it's got so many little depthy guys there. So let's say uh, a depth increment of three, a sum of increments of three. Okay, there we go. Um, and cut feed rate of 2,000 because we don't have all day. 500. I still think, feel like 500 is pretty slow, but it should be okay. No tabs. Um, I like that I don't have to lie to it, and that I can pick whatever tool I want. Nah, I'm nah, okay. I don't want to do that. I want will. We'll just we'll just lie to it, and I'll just use the same tool. Um, but for the T, let's see what the plug does. Uh, Sixty degree plug. Okay, so this is going to like go around the outside of it. Uh, I'm gonna pick a cutter that I actually like own. I don't know what this eleven millimeter sixty degree bit looks like, but I know what my 90 degree quarter inch bit looks like. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Let's see if there is a... Okay. So, yeah, whatever the last active tool was. That is the tool that shows up in the machine. Useful, I guess. Um, Sorry if this is making you guys sick. Uh, It's nice that the even though the tool is wrong, uh, it's not affecting the simulation with the wrong tool. But I would I would love to know how we make the simulation act on it. So. We can tell here that the V-carve looks pretty sane. Um, I'd love to see that 3D path.
Might, might want to look at that, see why that's so fast. Okay, so it's, it's doing the little corner clears. Um, cool. It could go faster in the simulation. Interesting. Okay. So stop it. All right. Uh, all of this seems relatively sane to me. Um, the is it active. Get rid of that first one. I'm not going to worry about cutting it out. Um, I wonder why it has tabs. I don't want any tabs. <laughs> Safe. Good, good, good thought, Nick. <laughs> um, okay. So I feel like this software definitely deserves some more looks, but I'm also kind of over it, digging around in it at the moment, and kind of want to see what the uh, output looks like. So, um, oh wow, okay. So it gives us a temp file of our G code. Um, Interesting. Gives us really commented G code. And yeah, it's 1030 and I'm drinking Red Bull. It's fine. I have ADHD. I'll go to sleep. Um, okay. So this is just a text file. Um, start hoeing. What does the probing routine do? That's cool. Huh. Touch top. Hmm. Interesting. I did try Gerbil Howl as a controller. Um, it didn't like the way it started out. Um, so, um... Give it a second to find the ports. Oh, we got a port. So when I went to the just Gerbil V1, it gave me an error about my G10. You know. System command not recognized. Gerbil transitions. Yeah. This is a fluid NC controller, Nick, so it's like kind of the same, but like not. Um, I've had really good luck with... Um, CNCJS and G Sender with it. Um, it's just, I, I think, I feel like uh, this really wants specific things. Yeah. Uh, 
unknown error. See controller window for details. I have a Gerbil Howl controller. Uh, I, I just, you know, have to put it together and like hook it up. I also have a Duet controller that I have to put together and hook up and so all the things. So, um, the Gerbil Mega, it didn't like Gerbil Mega either, which I, I would expect, it's same errors, so, um, this is a to-do list for your own use, that's neat, I like project notes, that's very handy. Show and hide controller. Whoa! Okay. That's relatively useful, actually. Um, save G code for your own use later. So I'm just going to try normal old Gerbil for my post processor. Uh, everything to upper or lower. Seems relatively sane. I and mean, the worst thing that's going to happen is the machine's going to crash. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, we'll save the project again. We will... I wonder what the STL was actually supposed to be for. Save G-code for later use. Desktop, you can. Grew. Grew. Let's see. Let's see in CJS. Let's put this on simulation. Okay, and um, <laughs> go get our G code. Well, uh, <laughs> our holes aren't in the right place. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Interesting. I, uh, I don't know what my machine would do if I tried to go that far through the table. Um... I don't have any mechanical stops stopping the Z from just like driving off the axis. I think eventually we'd drive the collet nut into the table. Um, let's not run that code. Uh, so, <laughs> um, so those holes that were all strung together where where the spiral path um <laughs> so uh one of the 
It could be. It could be a beta output issue. Um, I do have the stable version downloaded. Uh, if we're going to dig into that, I'm going to go get a chair. Um, so let's look first here at the spiral. Spiral job. So our sum of increments 12.7. Transformation mode is none. And I feel like our transformation mode was like the same for everything. Select how to transform your data. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's trying to scrap the floor just like straight through the table. I'm gonna grab my chair. Um, At some point, I should probably add some sort of like mechanical stop in the Z. The X and the Y, you know, you'll run into things before you cause a lot of problems, but the Z will just like drive straight through the table eventually. Um, so, all right. Did it do the drill path? No, it didn't do any of the circles. And there isn't a plunge hidden in there, <laughs> except unless you call that a plunge. So, what do you, where did it go? It, oh, this is funky too. Uh, there is no lift. It just, plop, or, Okay, uh, so it's like just it's just dragging through everything. Um, that's not that's not what we want. It's not what we want. Um, Oh. 20. Okay. Well, that's better. Um. <sighs> Why does it keep doing that? So I, yeah, Nick, it, it, it gives you a clearance plane that you can specify in the operations. The height of clearance plane is five. Um, maybe if we make everything like 20. Um, but to set the X coordinate I wonder if part of it is this machine is just weird. Uh, so if we go to Machine Manager and we look at uh, so limit x minus is zero, x plus is three hundred, uh, y minus is zero, y plus is like two fifteen, I think. Uh, yes. And then, oh, we could load a full machine file. Neat. Okay. Uh, Do 
it like add it to the end. Was a non Y. Oh, weird. Okay, that's fun. All machines. weird that it oh wow it is sending g code to this machine interesting so i wonder if uh yeah we saved that multiple times i wonder if we load this g code if it shows the sketchy things that it did since that was one of the things i was excited about was like showing a true Sure doesn't, okay. Where did it end up? Let's see. Sorry, this is kind of devolving into a trial and error session for a minute, but. Since machine simp was one of the things I was excited about with this, I would like to see it do the thing. Okay. So it likes those spirals. What do those spirals do? Or where are they at? Inner pocket. Inner pocket. Spiral. Transformation none. Clearance plane five. See, all of those should have been lifting to five plus, and they were going. Negative. But, hey Billy, um, it's 90 or 91 incremental. I can never remember. Because if, okay, yeah, 90 is incremental, or 90 is absolute. 
Hey, Mitch. <laughs> yeah, this software is like kind of a nightmare. Um, okay, whoa, all right. Here's the problem. All right, here's the spiral. So we, we G, G1, 90, feed rate 100, 90 to Z5. Uh, X16, Z5, and then we 91, plunge, to there, and then, okay. So that's like just another next step down. This is the, the next increment, G91. And then we run the border. And then we lift to Z5. So this almost makes me think that this representation's wrong. But anyway, um, hmm. Uh huh. I don't think I have any other. Do I have open builds on this? I do. Let's see what the open builds app looks like. See if it opens. Okay. So the Open Builds app shows it, right? So... So CJS is wrong? Which, you know, sure, uh, why not? Why, why can't it be wrong? It, it can totally be wrong, I guess. Close, Marlin. I know you don't like that, but that's okay. Yeah, it's still all freaky deaky. Uh, I kind of want to just run it and see what happens. Because, like, it doesn't do any big Z lifts, so we could, like, air cut it. Want to air cut it and see what happens? Like, again, what's the worst that's going to happen? Not a lot. Um, so let's pull the... Um, too dark in here. Hang on a second. That was loud. Now you guys can see. All right, so let's pull this tool out really quick. And, uh, you know, like I said, like if we air cut it, really not a lot that can go wrong. Yeah. 
guys can see what I'm doing CNCJS, just zeroing out um, work offsets so that it can like kind of do its thing. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, we probably need a helmet after I did that. I'm kind of surprised it worked still on Smoothie as a controller. Uh, connected, reset. Upload this thing. Um, I still really like the spinny bit on CNCJS, that's fun. Okay, so it's just the representation's weird. The, it's running the things like it should. Oh, there's the drill plunge. our packet. I've seen en enough um, that I'm comfortable letting it cut. Again, what's the worst that can happen? <sighs> Other than, you know. Not a lot. Um, I do have to find the actual end mill. Set home. Drill plunge this quickly.
good enough. Plug in the VFD. Okay, so, um, yeah, I think with all of this, the verdict is kind of one of those, like, should you use this? I don't know. It's not awful, but it's not good. Is it interesting? Absolutely it is. Um, I definitely want to play more with it. Especially now that it turns out that the simulation was sane and CNCJS's was not. Uh, so, let's see how it goes. I bet this part's going to come loose. It's not held down very well. <laughs> okay. Uh, that wasn't exactly how I intended it for that to go. <sighs> the uh, the tape was from last live stream. That plywood cuts well. It, it's like, it's a, uh, it's one of the single flutes of these, Mitch. Uh, they're like 20 bucks for, oh wait, you can't see that. Just me. Uh, it's a single flute of these. They're like 20 bucks on Amazon. Um, this is the two flute version. Um, so they're super cheap. Uh, and... Yeah, quite good for, for what they are. Um, my philosophy for router end mills, especially when you're getting going, is buy the cheapest ones because good ones don't make a difference when you're beginning. Um, they just make you cry harder when you break them. And uh, when I when I started this stream, I was like, well, I'll just buy the cheap ones that I know work well, so when people ask that question, I can say, hey, I know these are not good, but they're not bad. Oh, I've cut a lot of aluminum with those end mills, a whole lot of wood, a whole lot of plastic. Um, these are another one. Uh, they're about the same price, but they are, they're DLC coated. So they're, they're rainbowy, and they cut aluminum really, really well. I've been really happy with them, and they're like three bucks, and then they'll, they're like $25 for a pack. So uh, if you want links to those, I can send them. I'll, I can put them in the Milk Crate Discord. Um, so come join the Milk Crate Discord. Uh, let's turn the router back on. Try this again.
It's completely shameless, Will. It's not like I make any money from that project. Okay, so obviously the uh, preview was wrong. You can see it's still Okay, so 
Looks like at least some of you are still here. To see the end result. Uh, just do. Let's see. I don't remember which one of these was which. Darn. Okay, well, uh, this is what we just made. Um, obviously, it wasn't perfect. Uh, there's a couple flub ups in there. Um, you know, things that are notable. Uh, this piece here that is held in with the tabs is held in with tabs. Uh, they're thin. I think they're about as thin as I told them to be. It, but it should fit into that slot. That slot is not the size that I hoped it would be. Um, I don't know how to make that slot in Gerbil Grew. Um, the pocket's nice. The V-carved text looks like it would have been V-carved if I would have used a V-bit. The holes were round. Uh, I don't know, overall, I think this is relatively serviceable, I think. Um, you know, the, this is all supposed to be a comparison, right? Like, uh, I think this was free CAD. Um, Or that might have been free CAD. I think this is Fusion, actually. This was Kirimoto. So, like, we're running into limitations of file preparation. Uh, you know, each each software has its own sort of things that it wants for file prep. Um, you know, so in this case, when I got over here, uh, these, let's see. Uh, mm, oh, yeah, I don't have the actual DXF loaded anymore. Anyway, these rectangles should have been their own rectangles. This outline should have been its own outline. Some software hates that. Um, this is, I think that's the way this would have wanted it. Um, if I would have wanted that slot to be a quarter inch properly, like I, I did. Um, you know, when we did Kirimoto, the, the text was a huge problem. It was, it was really difficult to get it to recognize the text. And I never did figure out how to cut it all the way out. Uh, Kirimoto almost needs its own stream again because like it's like gotten a huge facelift since like we did the stream a month ago um and you know i could see this one getting a second stream as well because there's just there's just so much so that's kind of where i'm at with everything um does anyone that's still watching have any quick questions that they want to get in towards the end uh i threw a link to the DLC coded end mills in the chat for Mitch. <laughs> Those would work well in wood as well. I just don't want to waste them on the wood because I've got a whole bunch of the um, uncoated carbide ones that I can burn in, in wood. So, yeah. Um... Yeah, I, I'm very curious, um, what else I can do in this software, um, given, given some, some time to learn it, watching a couple of videos, um, you know, Sometimes I feel like the stream doesn't give some of these softwares a fair shake because I don't even try to learn it ahead of time. But um, it's also like, you know, exactly how a lot of users attack things. It's just like, nah, I'm here and I'm going to make something. So, you know, we do that. So uh, thanks everyone for watching. 
Um, I'm going to try to do it every week this month uh, just to get as many of these out as we can because there's so many softwares that I really want to do. I have to link to the Milk Crate Discord. You're right, I do. Uh, if you look at um, here, uh, if you go to milkcratecnc.com, the Discord link is there. That's where all the documentation that I've created for the Milk Crate is, and the Discord link is um, in it. So, uh, yeah. Thanks, guys. I uh, appreciate you hanging out for the time. And, um, you know, keep an eye out uh, this weekend for the next poll. Um, I want to go after some of the more common softwares, too. Like, uh, we haven't done Carbide Create. We haven't done Easel. Um, and I've never used either one. Uh, we haven't done uh, Dusk Proto, like we talked about. Um, I still super bad want to use, want to play with Pixel CNC. Uh, I can show you guys that really quick. It is a, a wild ride, and like I'll, I'll have to do a whole new test file because like it doesn't do I don't I don't think it would even import the one that we currently use uh, uh yeah like oh uh export file uh, yeah like I can't even figure out how to bring a software bring a thingy into it Create a layer, maybe? Master layer? Anyway, it's all focused around um, 3D machining. And it does a lot of really cool stuff that like, I've just never seen other softwares do. But it's the UI is just like, really? What are we doing here? Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, config. No. Duplicate. Uh, okay. For the next stream. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I I I love that idea. Well. Um. It, and maybe they aren't streams. Maybe they're like a focused project video. I I don't know. Um. Like, like, I have time to do focus project videos. Maybe. Um, I That was one of the things that I talked to. I talked to the Kirimoto developer at Earth, and uh, we had a whole, like, chat on um, how the stream went, how things could be better, and um, his interest in making really accessible, really usable cam software. And I, I really loved that. So, um, yeah, like future things, I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to go to bed. Uh, thank you guys for listening to me ramble for a couple hours. And keep an eye out for the, the next stream. And if you guys have suggestions for software um, that you think I haven't heard of, I would love to know. I'd be shocked if I haven't heard of it, but I would be ecstatic if I haven't heard of it. So, um, oh, yes. Uh, yeah, I, I really hope it is. My friend's working on the Artemis, and every, every launch she is, like, trying really hard to not have a panic attack. So I, I hope it goes. So, all right. I'll see you guys later. Uh, thank you for watching streaming and all that stuff so later guys